All right, thanks for coming, welcome. Uh, we're talking about managing stress, anxiety, depression, that kind of stuff. So, um, and this is really important, this is especially important for um, in a college campus because we have times of serious stress. One of those is now, and one of those is actually complicated now because not only do we have COVID, but we have um, grades due, we have uh, papers due, we have tests to take, we, and then we have to go home and uh, deal with the stuff there. And so there's a lot to kind of go along with that. Uh, I need to share my screen. Oh, that's for sure. Oh, there we go. All right, so what is stress? Uh, stress occurs when a person perceives the current situation uh, in a way that the event exceeds the person's coping resources. That's a really complicated way of saying that uh, there's an event in your life or there's a series of events and they basically cause you to, um, they, they're beyond what you can kind of handle. Um, and so what happens is, is your coping resources, the things that you use to cope don't work anymore. And so you're stressed out. Uh, and that's a, that can be a big deal because um, stress actually leads to um, things like anxiety and depression and, and that kind of stuff, which we'll talk about in a second. So, um, but stress is, it's really important to kind of manage stress and we'll talk more about how to do that. But this is kind of like a, a, a way to think about it. Um, and sometimes stress is actually a good thing. So for example, my brother likes to, um, uh, likes to run a lot and he lives in Colorado. And so he goes and runs trails. He was running and turned a corner and in the middle of the trail, uh, about six feet ahead of him, um, all of a sudden he heard rattling and this, and there was a coiled snake right there. It was a rattlesnake. Now, if he didn't have any stress about this, he would have just kept going and probably gotten bit and, you know, who else, who knows, knows what would have happened. But since he had stress, he actually, you know, stopped and said, I'm not doing this, ran back the other way. And I think he ran on some streets for a few weeks after that. So that's kind of like, so that kind of stress is good. It's when stress overtakes you and, 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 and kind of dominates your life that it can be really difficult. So things that cause stress, things that cause stress, especially in, in, in an academic uh, environment, uh, tests and academic performance. And this works actually both ways for both, um, students and for professors or teachers. Um, teachers want to make sure that students do well. I mean, uh, you can only, there's only so much you can do, but you want to make sure they do well. Uh, and it still is a place where there's a lot of work that goes into making sure the students do well. As well, students have the pressure of actually taking the tests and writing the papers and doing the work and all that kind of stuff. There's a pressure to succeed. Uh, there are post-graduation plans. So students deal with the fact that they're trying to figure out what they're going to do after school is over. Um, and that's one of the, that's a big thing uh, for a lot of students right now because some of them are graduating, you know, in, in May, or Mar or December or some of them are graduating in May and being able to figure out what that is or what they need to do um, is stressful. Uh, and also finances are obviously stressful. They're stressful for everybody. Um, it just doesn't seem like, it seems like sometimes there's not enough money to go around or, and especially at this time of year when you're trying to, you know, your heating costs may go up, um, you know, your car may break down or whatever. Uh, and then you're trying to buy Christmas presents and stuff like that. Like finances can be a real difficult thing. And they cause a lot of stress because there's something that you can't quite control. Um, stupid computer keeps jumping ahead. Um, so anxiety is the most common mental health concern among college students. Um, roughly, roughly three in four college students claim to have uh, anxiety at some point. Let's see if I can move that over. There we go. And this is a big deal because anxiety is basically unchecked stress. So students are so stressed out that they're leading to anxiety. Now, with that being said, there are different kinds of anxiety. There is anxiety that comes from unchecked stress. You have a number of stressors and you're not able to kind of deal with it. And then there's like clinical anxiety or anxiety that comes from uh, what we would call a mental health issue. Um, and, then that, and those kinds of anxieties deal with stuff like um, anything from like generalized anxiety disorder or social anxiety disorder 
to things like arachnophobia or claustrophobia or something like that. Um, these are anxieties that, that require something more than just kind of uh, kind of re reorienting life or getting life back together. 85% of college students feel overwhelmed. I imagine that 85% of college faculty and staff also feel overwhelmed. And so, um, uh, and that, and, and feeling overwhelmed is a real, is, is a real thing. And, um, and, but it also, it, for college students, it's also a good thing. Like this is a good stress because it teaches us, it teaches somebody in, in college that there are going to be multiple things going on in life and you've got to be able to manage those multiple things. Like I think of my life, um, right now I'm in school, I work, I have my kids, uh, I volunteered a couple places, uh, and the volunteer stuff is on my, is like, is my, and, and school is my, you know, my thing, like those are my choices, but they still cause stress, and there's a lot that goes along with that. Um, and then there's, you know, dealing with uh, my spouse and, and understanding my kids and all that kind of stuff. And so, um, you know, you can feel overwhelmed. And so college is actually a good place to experiment with being able to see where your stressors are and learning how to uh, navigate that. For faculty and staff, it's a place that can be a place, uh, uh, an issue where you're dealing with a lot of different things and being able to kind of move around and, and, um, and, and orient yourself so that you can deal with all these stressors. 80% of college students feel exhausted this is the one that is, is, is really, um, it, it, this is the one that kind of gets me. It's 47%, almost 50% of college students feel hopeless. Hopelessness is a really bad thing because if you don't have hope, uh, there's not a whole lot of reason to do stuff. Um, there's not a lot of reason to kind of keep going on. And 51% and of students actually experience overwhelming anxiety in school. And this can lead to things like attrition. So like dropping out of school, your lower academic performance, uh, less job satisfaction, they can also lead to burnout. And uh, some of the symptoms of anxiety include rumination, which is, which is you think about something over and over and over and over and over again, you just can't get it out of your mind. Uh, worrying, uneasiness, apprehension, and then the fear of failure. So uh, depression, I, by the way, uh, I'm kind of running through this because I know you guys have a meeting. So... <laughs> Uh, but if you have any questions or anything, just go ahead and, and ask. Uh, depression is the second leading mental health concern on college after anxiety. And it's interesting. I, I, would, I would draw a line from stress to anxiety to, um, to depression. I think they all kind of go hand in hand. I think the literature kind of leads to that too. A lot of people that have depression also have anxiety and vice versa. Uh -huh. So this is the second leading cause of mental health concern on college campuses. About 17% of college students experience some sort of depression. Um, and I would actually think that's actually higher. Um, because I think that about 25, well, it's about 25 or 30% of college students experience some sort of mental health issue, whether that's um, depression or anxiety, like clinical anxiety, or if that is um, like bipolar disorder or schizophrenia or you know, one of the borderline personality disorder, post-traumatic stress disorder, on and on and on and on. So, and 63% of, of students feel quite lonely. And this is also a, a thing because um, when it comes to like suicide, what happens is, is that someone feels, in the, in the interpersonal theory of suicide, which I ascribe to, um, it says that what happens is, is that people begin to feel lonely and they begin to cut themselves off from people um, because they feel like a burden and they feel like they're just burdening their family and their friends and stuff like that. And the more that you cut people off and the more that you kind of cut, cut people out of your life, um, the more lonely you feel and the more like a burden you feel and it just kind of keeps snowballing and snowballing and snowballing. So feeling lonely can really lead to a lot of um, things. Symptoms of depression include a depressed mood. Um, if someone's not, if someone's sleeping too much, or even not sleeping enough, um, if someone is uh, having thoughts of hopelessness, of guilt, uh, worthlessness, helplessness, a loss of appetite, sleep disorder, even psychomotor uh, problems. So if somebody might, you know, shake their hands, or uh, or uh, sometimes people speak 
so slowly that you can't almost can't understand them or they just process things very slowly and stuff. So those are all kind of symptoms to, to look at and to examine when we're dealing with uh, depression. So the key to kind of dealing with these things is to really get rid of your stress. And there's two ways to get rid of stress. One is to eliminate your stressor, but this isn't always practical. For example, if you're in, if you're in college, if you're a professor, if you're a teacher, if, if you're um, you know in charge of the library, there are stressors involved in that. You know, doing schoolwork, grading schoolwork, making sure people have the resources that they need, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It's not like we can just simply go, well, this, you know, it's not like Tom can go, this stresses me out to grade all these papers and look at all these um, discussion posts and stuff. So I'm just not going to do it. That, that, that probably isn't going to work. Some people aren't going to be very happy about that. So, um, you know, like, uh, you know, like for me, like, I don't really like meeting, you know, I, I do like meeting with students, but if I said, I don't really like meeting with students, well, that's a major part of my, of, of my position here. And so, uh, that would, you know, um, that wouldn't do it. So that's just not always practical. Now, there are some things that we can, we can get rid of uh, or that we can reorient in ways that we can um, deal with the stressor. Like, for example, one thing my wife and I did when we first got, when we first moved back to Plymouth was that we, um, we didn't have a whole lot of money. And so we were trying to figure out what to do. And we had a Netflix subscription so we got DVDs and that was when they sent the DVDs to you. And, um, and so we canceled our cable and just went with like the four or five channels that we could get, catch over the air. And then um, you got a cheap internet thing and I just had the DVDs coming in. And so we were saving like 60 or $70 a month just on that um, by just by reducing, you know, that kind of thing. And that, and that put us in a little more of a financially stable position. Um, and there's just stuff like that that, that you can do um, to, to reduce or eliminate a certain stressor, you know? But one of the best ways to do it, to, 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 to eliminate stressors or to deal with stressors is to develop a, a means of coping well with stressors. So one of the things is work-life balance. Do you, are you a workaholic? That's usually not good for you stress-wise. If you work all the time, it doesn't... Um, it doesn't leave time for you to do the things that you really enjoy. And it's not to say that, you, that one doesn't enjoy the work that they're doing, but um, work-life balance is really important. Uh, one of the things that, like, I, like when I wrote my dissertation, I got to stay home with my kids while I did it, mostly. Uh, I, I, taught on, I taught on a couple campuses for like a day, a day or two a week. But um, it really established for me, you know, because in a dissertation, and Tom can really kind of um, uh, speak to this too, really? is that... Uh, it's all consuming at times. It, it just, it, it, it dominate, like every thought it seems like is just, is like dissertation thoughts and like notes and stuff. And so having a family and being able to disconnect from that at times was really important to me um, uh, while doing the dissertation and then for having, you know, some balance after that. Uh, you giving up perfectionism, and this is really hard for a lot of people. It's kind of hard for me. I like to do things really well. If I'm going to do something, I want it to be perfect. I want everyone to, I want everybody to stand up and clap for me and tell me how awesome I am and all that kind of stuff. I actually don't want that. That's not, that, that would make me really uncomfortable. But, um, but I, I do, I like things to be perfect. And so giving up the fact that sometimes things just aren't going to be perfect. Sometimes it's just not going to be the best. Sometimes it just needs to get done or something just needs to be done well. Um, that's okay. And another thing that really uh, helps, I think, is changing our thinking and our behavior. So instead of um, looking at something and going, this, this stresses me out. This is, you know, this, this really bothers me. I can't do this. I can't uh, deal with this or whatever. Instead of doing that, uh, say, how can I tackle this so that I can get this done? Like maybe incrementally or maybe, um, or maybe you know uh, changing certain behaviors so that I'm um, doing this. Like for example, like and I think of college students here. I think actually I think of my 14 year old son. Yeah, uh, he'll complain about not getting. He he wants to get all A's, which I think is great. But then his so that's so that's good thinking. I want to get all A's. 
but then his behaviors don't always line up with that. Like there is, um, and we, and like, we're not pushing him to like get all A's. We just want him to do well in school, but, um, you know, he'll spend a lot of time playing like video games or texting with his friends or like just that kind of stuff. And, um, and it's like, if you want straight A's, you may have to put more work into this, you know? Um, the, the kind of thinking that you have has to match the behaviors and the behaviors you have has to match your thinking. So, and we'll get a little more into that. Ugh. So these are, so briefly, these are some things to help with stress. I cannot tell you how much developing a support system is for managing stress. I have a generalized anxiety disorder. I'm pretty open about that. Um, I have anxiety attacks sometimes. And, uh, and usually they're not real bad. They're just anxiety attacks. I've had them enough that I, I live with them. But developing a support system so that if something happens, if like, say, for example, uh, I have a really bad anxiety attack, um, I have people around or I have, we have stuff in place so that um, if I'm going to be, you know, really down for, for a couple hours uh, with, an, with an attack, you know, like we can call my parents or my wife's parents, or I can call my wife home or, you know, that kind of stuff. Now, sometimes making a phone call is all the energy that I have, but um, doing that is important. And developing a support system is really important. Um, for college students, like this is really key is that one of the things that actually speaks to student success the most is having a group of friends in school that will help you, um, maybe not help you study, but will help push you along to be like, we, you know, we need to get our best grades and we need to do this well and we need to do that. Um, and so uh, that's good. I spoke to one of the sports teams yesterday and I reminded them that, you know, they all need to, like their team, they need to like pull together and get the people that are, that are, um, that are struggling in school or, or whatever. They need to make sure that they get help and uh, get the stuff that they need in order to, uh, in order to do, do well in school. Taking care of yourself is a major thing. If you, eat, if you eat unhealthy, if you don't sleep enough, don't get any exercise, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, the more likely you are to have stress. Um, so, you know, just making sure that you, de you do those things uh, that, that take care of yourself and that really do help you um, physically, you know? Because if you feel bad physically, there's a good chance you're going to feel bad mentally. Manage expectations. So uh, when I wrote my dissertation, I thought it was going to change the world. I didn't really think that. And by the time that I got finished writing the dissertation, I just wanted it done. But, um, and I think that I've always heard the best dissertation is a done dissertation. But uh, managing expectations and understanding that you, you're not going to always be the biggest, the best, the baddest, whatever. Um, there is more to it than that. And so making sure that you're able to manage your expectations and stuff, um, you know, for students, you know, like for, you know, for example, like if you're grading papers and you've got a hundred papers and you're like, I'm going to get this done today. That's probably not a good idea. That's, that's a, uh, I mean, some, I know some people that can do that. I just never could. I would do, I would do increments of 40, 50 papers at a time if I had that many so that I wasn't burning out while I was trying to read these things. Because the more, and I also noticed the more that I burned out reading them, the worse my, uh, the worse the grades got and the worse my comments got. Um, keep the most important thing, the most important thing. Um, this is something that I learned from, uh, so I used to teach at a, at a school um, and my, and I was, I was kind of friends with the, uh, with the guy that was in charge of my department. And <clears throat> I went to him and I said, Hey, listen, I got this fellowship for next year and I can't teach here anymore because I have the fellowship and that's my, um, you know, that that's the, the agreement is that I don't teach at all. And, and I go, and it's going to make us a little more financially uh, stable. Like it was a good fellowship. And he was like, Hey, keep the most important thing. The most important thing teaching right now is not the most important thing. He's like taking care of your family, finishing your dissertation. Those are the most important things. And it was something that I really, um, I really uh, held on to in, in life at times, you know, like, uh, yeah, I mean, that's just what it is. So 
Also, recognize the signs and symptoms. So if you do start to feel hopeless, you start to feel helpless, you start to feel like you um, aren't managing and stuff, recognize those signs and symptoms, acknowledge that you may need help, and come find somebody that can help you. That's, a, that, that, that's just a really big deal. Developing coping skills, things like journaling, mindfulness, et cetera, and find an outlet for yourself. I love, well, you, I don't know if you can see on my hands. I got paint on there. I was painting last night because I was stressed. So um, those are just kind of things that we do. I play music. Uh, I hang out with my kids and my dog and my wife. So I always forget about my wife, even though she's probably the most constant person in my life. Um, I hang out with her the most. Maybe, it's the, maybe that's why I forget her is that she's always there. So next thing, uh, social support. And social support comes in kind of two things. Peer support, like I was talking about, if college students have peer support, they feel much better about doing school the right way. Now also peer support can work the opposite way. You fall in with guys or, or girls, you know, it can go either way. Um, I always think of guys because I'm a guy and I've watched guys do this. Um, fall into guys or, or girls or groups that do dumb things um, or that don't, push each other, like that's a bad support group. That's gonna cause you stress. But good support groups um, encourage you and lift you up and that kind of stuff. Family support is also really important. This is something that some of our students lack. And so they need to develop those things that are, um, they need to develop supports uh, other places. And sometimes that's with faculty and staff. Sometimes that's, um, you know, at a church or whatever else. Um, and sometimes, you know, families uh, will coalesce together uh, through difficult times. So, and then lastly, mindfulness. I think mindfulness and mindfulness has a, has a good, there is a good um, record. Uh, there's a lot of literature out there that shows that mindfulness is really helpful for dealing with these kinds of things. Um, and so mindfulness is not, it's not like transcendental meditation. Transcendental meditation is like trying to empty your mind and get rid of everything and try to be nothing. Um, th this is not that. Mindfulness, like the way that I practice mindfulness is I let my thoughts come and I just kind of let them go. Just kind of come over me and, and roll, roll over me. And so that, and sometimes if, if a thought like won't go away, I'll just write it down. And then it, and then it's there and then I can deal with it later. So, uh, and mindfulness, what it does is it, it creates a real awareness of the present moment. So I am here and I am now. And I am here now. And I am only here now. I am connected to everything. Um, I always like to use the example of, uh, of uh, um, Ray in The Last Jedi when Luke's talking to her, trying to teach her the Force. And he's like, reach out and feel. And he kind of like, she, she does, and it's bad. Like, Luke doesn't like it. But, um, you know, to reach out and to just kind of feel everything around you without having to touch anything. And it sounds really kind of new agey, like hippie kind of stuff, but it really is, is, is very helpful. And then the mind-body connection. Um, if this was in person, what I would do is I'd have an orange or a – I'd have an orange, and I'd use the orange, and we'd sit and for about 10 or 15 minutes just kind of – looking at the orange, smelling the orange, um, feeling the orange, um, you know, just kind of, you know, even listening to the orange, does it, does, it, does it sound like something, you know, like does the world sound different coming through an orange and then tasting the orange. And, and, and so you, what, you're, what you're doing though is you're, you're connecting your mind and your body, like my sensations and my feelings to that. It's a control of attention. Like I said, just letting thoughts uh, wash by non-judgmental thoughts. So what you really want to grab onto is though, are those thoughts that are um, like non-judgmental. Like we don't sit in mindfulness and be like, I suck. I'm terrible. I'm awful. I'm scum. You know, like the idea is to be like, the world is good. I'm connected. I, I can feel I'm, I'm okay. Like those kinds of things. And then there's a real awareness of the bodily sensations that we have. So where we sit and how we sit and, um, you know, how it makes us feel. Uh, and I, I sit in different positions. So I'll sit in like a, a, 
like, you know, the crisscross applesauce is what my kids call it. Um, sometimes I'll sit in a chair, you know, whatever. Uh, it all it all goes together. Um, and, and you're just a really aware of the bodily sensations. One of the things I love to do is I love to, like, my favorite time to practice mindfulness is when it's kind of windy, so it's like breezy, with the sun shining down. And so I can feel the warmth on my face while also, because I tend to go outside to do this. Um, I can feel the warmth on my face and then, but I can also feel the breeze. And I just feel that connection to everything else that that that, that breeze is touching and that um, and that sun is hitting. And so uh, that's so that's kind of where, where I am with that. Any questions? It's good. Nate, can you hear me again? I can. Okay. I'm gonna have to switch over in about a minute or so to go to that other meeting with Dr. Dvorak. Yeah. So um is this I'm a, done. So oh, I'm, okay. gonna, I'm gonna record this and I'm going to we'll put it out on on uh uh somewhere. Yeah, I was wondering, is that a PowerPoint you've been working off of? Yeah. That you're showing me? Yeah, just send that out. That'd be great. Okay, I can do that. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. You're welcome. All right. Thanks, Nate. Yep. Bye. Bye. Bye.